Hello! Recently, I've been thinking a lot about action figures. I can't think why. Anyway, I suddenly remembered that some time ago, like months and months ago, I bought a big old bag, stroke bundle, stroke job lot, whatever you like to call them, of action figures off of eBay. And they were just basically a random setup of um, 80s and mostly 90s action figures. And so, the time has come to go through it and see what we've got in here. I can't bloody remember. I literally looked at the listing, bought it, because there were lots of them, and the price was quite good, and yeah, I haven't really looked at it since. So it's going to be a bit of a surprise for both of us, and I apologise in advance if I don't know what some of the figures are, because that is liable to occur. And I apologise in advance if I don't know what some of the figures are. We'll look them up afterwards, but uh, my knowledge of these things is usually pretty good, and I really regret saying that now because uh, it's going to set me up for a fall, isn't it? Anyway, <clears throat> let us begin with what is on top of the box. I can see it from here, actually. It's a monkey man! Oh, but he's got a leather jacket on! That's right, it's everybody's favourite character. Leather jacket monkey man. No, Captain Simeon from Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys. And I've just told you just about everything I know about this property. It was a cartoon. That's all I can tell you. I've never seen it. Um, it always felt like a bit of a Bucky O'Hare knockoff, maybe? But yeah, it was about some monkeys and spaceships and stuff. Look, here's one of them now. The figure's pretty good. It's quite a chunky thing. Quite a nice articulation um, on the shoulders. Could have done with some at the uh, almighty elbows there, but you know, the head moves around nicely, if, if that is something you need with your monkey figures. And he's got gripping monkey foot hands, or whatever they're called which is always a useful thing when you're, I don't know, sitting in your spaceship or something. Um, yeah, it does sit down all right. These things must have come with spaceships and stuff, so that would make sense. But I'm pretty sure this is the captain himself, Captain Simeon. I don't know what his name was. Um, Billy. Billy Simeon. No, I've got no idea. Not seen it. But decent figure. Chunky. Like it. Um, I seem to remember the packaging of them was sort of round with um, more cardboard at the top and bottom. That's useful, isn't it? But what accessories and things they came with, I'm not sure. It's going to be space guns, isn't it? Of course it's going to be space guns. You go over there, mate, because now it's time for, for this beauty. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, this brings back some memories. I had a full set of these figures at one stage. God knows why. Never seen the programme it's from. This is Pudface Morgan, because he's got a face like a pudding or something, I don't know, it's just a weird name. And he is from the Robocop TV series, where he was like the head bad guy, because apparently the Robocop TV series is bloody Dick Tracy or something. I mean, could you get a more Dick Tracy looking villain? But no, apparently he, um, yeah, is in future Detroit with his spotty tie and his, frankly, incredible hat and suit combination. Yep. Yeah. And Robocop would have to tell him um, that it was his move and that he was a creep. And you know what? I think he's right. Um, again, quite chunky 90s figures. Um, he's got, it's, say his head doesn't move at all, but um, he's got no neck, so that kind of makes sense. Maybe he's getting on a bit and doesn't want to twiddle his head from side to side because he'll end up cricking his neck. I know the bloody feeling. Um, yeah, you've got full-on articulation and the knees and the elbows and that. It's quite nice. If I remember, it came with a load of guns and things. Most of these did. The most interesting figure in this range was they had one of... It was called Commander Cash or something, who was like this OCP mascot type character, but they actually did a figure of him. I'm not sure if he appeared as like a human in the series or not. Or he seemed an odd choice. He's a very cartoony figure, whereas these are, you know, based on actors and stuff. But there we are. Pudface Morgan, because Clarence Bodica was dead. Next up, it's a bloody Minotaur, isn't it? <laughs> it's got very large horns. An interesting design, this. And it's got disco boots. Oh, amazing. Oh, and action feature. Oh my god! <laughs> it's 70s Italian disco minotaur! Oh, that's that's endless fun. Uh, really good um, sort of belt-type skirty thing going on here as well, the gladiator style of, of ancient Greece or whatever it bloody was. Romans? I don't know. I'm going Roman, actually. But yeah! The boots, look, uh, have a line down the middle to uh, hint at Minotaur hooves, so that's good. Is it Minotaur or Minotaur? I always used to say Minotaur, but everybody seems to say Minotaur these days. So I've changed my pronunciation, but just got it wrong. Sorry about that. Right, I don't know what the bloody hell this is from. There were Minotaurs in... Minotaurs... Oh, God. Let's call them windowsills. There were windowsills. Windowsill, of course, being the classic mythological half-man, half-bull creature in the uh, Mighty Maze. Um, sorry, Labyrinth. 
Bandai. Oh, 94 Bandai. It's going to be Power Rangers, I reckon, which would explain the chunkiness as well. Yes, OK. I'm going to say, and God, I hope I'm not wrong, <laughs> we'll check at the end, <laughs> that this is um, a Power Rangers villain. Did they fight a Minotaur? Sorry, windowsill at any stage? I don't know. Did it have two screws in its arse? I don't know. But it's quite nice as a figure. I don't like the way you can't do anything with the arms. They're just in this weird pose, apart from rah, 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 I beat you up, Power Rangers. And the legs are sort of far more articulated. It's mm, quite uh, loose joints there for moving it however you want. But yeah, it's a bit statue-like, but it's quite well done. I don't mind it. Go over to the side. We'll check you out later. Because now it's time. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I remember these. This, unbelievably, is a Transformer. That's right. Hairy no-neck Batman is, and not in the superhero sense, is a Transformer, unbelievably. It's these things called, I think, oh, no, I'm sure they were called Pretenders, actually. Pretender. It's got a jetpack as well. Of course it has. Vroom. Action. Um, yeah, basically, they were just shells. And you, oh, you suppose? Oh yeah, there we are. You open them up and predictably the bloody Transformer's gone. It had like a really crap thin Transformer in it that just sat inside here and had some spindly legs that would go into the leg bits. And that was it. And it would climb inside this shell and they're like, ha ha, nobody will suspect I'm a robot now. I'll just walk down the road like an eight foot tall bat monster and be completely inconspicuous. Bloody hell. It looks like his internal organs are leaking out of his body. That is a bad thing. Yeah, I think these are quite, um, n not, not that popular amongst Transformers fans. They're sort of interesting from a design point of view, but they're hardly the nice stuff that the Transformers were known for. Um, I'm sure I have one of these somewhere with the robot in, but not handy. They always had like little things like there'd be a belt that fits over and presumably something goes in these little holes on the shoulders as well, but I couldn't tell you what off the um, top of my head. Anyway, I don't know what on earth this one's called. There was a Transformer called Ratbat, but that was one of those little things that turned into a cassette tape and went to live in Soundwave's guts. So over there with you as we bring on this. Oh god, this is a Power rangers you thing, but it's not Power Rangers, is it? Right, well, it's not Kamen Rider, it's not the Beetleborgs thing, it's going to be VR Troopers, I think. And that is all I can tell you about this. I don't know what the character's name is or anything. Um, but it was basically one of those um, series where they took a load of Japanese TV stuff and re-edited it and stuck some CGI on top and it was a new series. If I remember, right, I could be wrong on this, I could be getting this confused, but this series was actually pretty popular, but they ran out of the Japanese source material really quickly, so there's only like a couple of series of it. Um, yeah, I've never seen it. I don't know if it's any good or not. I can tell you that the figure's got light piping though. You see that uh, thing in the head there where it's all transparent? Shine a light through that and the light sort of comes out of the eye bit. But basically, he looks like a slightly fancy Robocop. That's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna call him. Fancy Robocop. Dun, 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 dun. There, I did a Robocop thing of beating Pudface, and now it's all the same. No, definitely VR Troopers, I am convinced, but I'm gonna have to put him to one side and discover the figure's name, for that will annoy me. Again, Typical uh, 90s sort of chunky, solid figure. The dog could chew on that for a fair bit before he got through the legs, I think. Um, simple articulation and... Uh, yes, yeah, got that kind of scales. A lot of this 5-inch stuff in the 90s. So, you go over there and we'll find your name later, my friend. Gee, I wonder which character this is. It's Billy Lembo, the man who crunks. No, it's Spider-Man. I had this figure as a kid. This is a Secret Wars one from the 80s. wonder... I'll say there's on here somewhere. Can you give us... Here we are. Uh, you probably won't be able to make this out at home. 1984 Marvel Comics Group. Yeah, part of the Secret Wars one. I had Spider-Man and Doctor Doom. And all the characters came with like this shield with like lenticular imagery on it. But I remember Spider-Man by far being my favourite. And I like the fact that he actually... I mean, this one's very worn. But it does actually have all the sort of webbing painted on. Because often that was left off figures, which was a bit crap. The Doctor Doom figure was a bit... Because mm, it didn't have a cape or anything. didn't look quite as good. There was also a Captain America one. And I remember being disappointed he didn't come with his proper shield. He just came with one of these giant sort of... Yeah, shields with a bit of lenticular art in which not quite the same thing, but this was the first Spider-Man toy I remember having, actually, and I liked it lots because Spider-Man was my favourite. Because I don't know if you know this, but he is both a spider 
and a man. Actually, it doesn't quite work like that, as I'm sure you're aware. Anyway, you go over there, mate. That is so of the time. Although, a lot of figure lines in the 80s, you did have the three three quarter inch scale, but this one, a little bit bigger. Um, I think most of the Marvel figures always were. Although, the, oh, if you start going back earlier, you've got things like pocket superheroes and that, which are more in scale. Let's not get into that, because we haven't got any of those to show. You go over there, Spidey, because it's... Oh, oh, oh I went in to pick something up, and I picked something up, up instead. My fingers got caught on it. It is a little man, like a little elf, right? This is a three three quarter inch one, interesting. This is um, Chronicles of Narnia that we were talking about earlier, but yeah. Yeah, that's very much a different scale, doesn't it? Minotaurs are quite that big. Sorry, window sills. Um, which one's this? Edmund? <sighs> Richard? Julian Goggleworthy the fourth? I can't remember. I, I think. Um, yeah, oh, I'm going to go... F no, Edmund's got dark hair, hasn't he? I can't remember the names of the kids from Narnia. They were all a bit sort of um, generic, you know, Famous Five type stuff, weren't they? But uh, this is based on the films that I think it was Disney put out the... Um, or did Disney put out, like, the first two of the films? They did... Um, good God, what did they do? Um, start with Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, obviously. Then Prince... Caspian, and then they did Voyage of the Dawn Treader. I think Voyage of the Dawn Treader, although having the same sort of actors and the same uh, visuals, etc., was actually a different production company. Am I right on that? Quite haven't thought about that stuff in a long time. But it was quite a good um, adaptation, if I recall. And here he is, not in his battle armour, but ready to stab Mr. Tumnus with his sword or something. <laughs> Poor Mr. Tumnus. James McAvoy, whatever happened to him? Oh yeah, he's in everything. And he's really good, so good for him. Um, yeah, these are... You're going for the sort of semi... Not quite G.I. Joe articulation, but you've got um, knees and you've got your hips and your elbows and your shoulders and your head. They're yeah, pretty good movement. I don't know why his arms stick out so much to the side. I can kind of get that one so we can get around the scabbard that's permanently attached, but the other one's a bit... I don't know. Well, there we are. Um, whatever your name is, we're going to call you Joffa. You get over there because it's time for dun, 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 dun. the bloody Happy Meal. There's always a Happy Meal toy in these <laughs> when you get a load of figures. There's always one, and I'm sure this is a Happy Meal toy. Yep, yeah, made from McDonald's, made Disney. Oh God, now is this John Smith from Pocahontas, or is it the one from the Hunchback of Notre Dame? Never really seen either of those. Um, I think it's Hunchback of Notre Dame with the golden armour and the beard. Ah, right, the Pocahontas guy does not have a little beard. Please, judge me by my soul patch. Yes, that's it. Well, I mean, it's almost a figure. He's I mean, got some articulation, I suppose, just no leg articulation that's stuck on the stand. It's all pretty good for a Happy Meal toy, I think, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't do anything as such, but for a little statue in a decent scale... Yeah, I'd say that's one of the better Happy Meal toys, actually. I don't know what Happy Meal toys are like these days. I presume they're made of fire. But, um, gonna be honest, I've got no data to back that up. Right, now the one I meant to get earlier, this bloody thing. <laughs> oh, I always want to say Thundercats for this, but I'm sure it's Brave Star, actually. And it had, like, a big hat or something. And it was something from, a, like, a mining colony. There were these space miners, which were, like, these slightly odd-looking fellas with giant three-toed feet and, like, f hang on, but four-fingered hands? How does that work? Why are they got one? Oh, I don't know. And look, he's got his chocolate bar on his cell phone for later. Um, yeah, these, these, gonna be honest, this character always creeps me out a bit. Brave Star. If you don't know about Brave Star, it's about a space cowboy. There we are, that was quick, wasn't it? Um, yeah, this, this is the creepiest of, oh, oh. Ah, well, it looks like this came off some time ago and somebody glued it back on. <laughs> And, oh no, just the slightest movement has caused it to come right off. Ah, uh, yeah, that's definitely been super glued at some point. Well, I'll probably glue that back on later. But do I really need this in my life? I'm not entirely sure. Don't know the character's name. I'll look that up after. Look at it. Look at his odd sort of deep red eyes with blue bits in the middle. Hello, I will do mining for you. You like Minecraft, don't you? Come and live in my mind forever. I don't like him. He's creepy and arguably creepier than... What was the villain from Brave Star? Tex Hex? Like a purple undead cowboy type? Yep. Yeah. Right, don't like him. Go over there, but we will discover your name later. And now I've got this amazing severed head. Hang on. Oh, no, it's going to take all the paint off, I think. 
Ashens and the quest for the severed head that he wears on his own head. Coming soon. No, maybe not. Right, next up. Oh, it's Shredder with most of his armour missing, but it is the mighty Shredder from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the first of the figures of this character, I think. I never particularly liked this figure, and I can tell you for why, you probably guessed, bloody weird pose, because like, you can move the legs like that, but otherwise he's constantly in this sort of weird crouch, and his arms just kind of go like this. I mean, it's handy if he wants to um, hold his chin as if he's really thinking about something. Hmm. But it does kind of look like he's just squatting down the whole time. I don't... is that a kung fu pose? Not really, it looks a bit more like he's going to the toilet or something. Not quite uh, convinced by that. But the actual sculpting stuff is... Uh, yeah, it's fine. They always went for that sort of very cartoony look um, for the Ninja Turtles figures. And my god, I don't know if you... Oh, the wrists wrote... Isn't that odd? It's got wrist articulation on one arm, not the other. I don't quite understand that. Um, yeah, the there are so many Ninja Turtles figures released you would not believe. Or oh, Hero Turtles, as it was called over here. That's a long story. Even the theme tune went, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't get us started. But, um, yeah, see, I, I, I was sort of disappointed with these, because they're, they're decent enough figures in their way, but just the... Why is he posed like that? I really don't get it. Don't get it at all, but uh, there we are. Well, Shredder, you can go over there and sit on Spider-Man whilst we look at... Oh, shit, I don't know what this is. <laughs> we found one. Pajamas Man. I made my own mask out of a bit of a curtain. Yeah, that's not the best, is it? So some sort of ninjury thing going on. Have you suffered an injury? Um, yeah, very chunky. What is this? 1986 Hasbro. This is a Hasbro figure. Mm, got retailers. Right, I think I do know what this is. So Hasbro did like just some generic ninja figures called something like Ninja Warriors? Or is that the I'm gonna think of the video game? I don't know. I'm gonna say Ninja Warriors. And basically, yeah, they were just quite chunky ninjas, because ninjas were popular at the time. I mean, just look at the, the uh, VHS rentals at the time and how many ninja films are around. American Ninja. American Ninja 2, American Ninja 3, Ninja 3, The Domination, all your favourites. Pray for Death with the show Kazuki. No, kids probably weren't watching that one. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. Whether this is a good guy or a bad guy, I don't know. Um, but he's got some sort of moustache going on under his incredibly crap mask that looks like it's going to fall off at any stage, frankly. Could have escaped from a Godfrey Ho film, crikey. But yeah, I'm going for that. Um, Ninja Wars a character name, I haven't got a bloody clue, I'll definitely have to look that up. Interesting figures though, very chunky, um, very, very solid, and big old hands so you can stick the katanas or whatever and then smack them into each other, and, well, the loose paints end up looking like this, but they won't actually break. A very solid toy, that one. Next up, <gasps> dun, dun, dun. oh, so this is a, obviously a space sort of figure, but uh, very vac metalized. You don't see that anymore. Um, although I've got some paint, which looks exactly like vac metalization. It's bloody amazing. Um, this is from the core, isn't it? One of Lanard's figures. Uh, I can't see what's written on that. Ah, it says Lanard the other way up. Got it, 19... 94? I thought they were earlier than this. But yeah, Lanard made what is essentially knock-off G.I. Joe's, really, but decent ones. Um, and these were some of the best of them, I think, these sort of spacey ones. They released them with various different paint schemes. Not all of them were chrome, but uh, this sort of chrome one is the most interesting. The articulation is identical to G.I. Joe. You've got your O-ring in there. Look, you're risking it by pulling that. That could have snapped. Fortunately, I have a lot of spare O-rings. They're not hard to get. Go to a uh, plumber's place. They have loads of them. Yeah, that's pretty good, that. Oh, the spaceman could not handle the jump cut. I don't think these characters had names, I'm not sure. Um, they usually came on like, I think they came packaged in like three of them together or something? Can't recall. Ah, uh, but I do enjoy these chrome figures of yesteryear. There we are, Mr. Lanard. Go and sit over there with the Shredder and the Spider-Man and the Narnia bloke. Right. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's him? This is interesting. Quickly scale. A little bit sh... Yeah, no, about three three quarter. Um, obviously from a cartoon. Um, what do we know about this? Uh, I can't make out 
the year on the back. I don't think there is a year, actually. CN, CN Cartoon Network? Hmm. Is this, uh, what's his name? I was about to say Johnny Bazooka Tone, which is a really obscure old video game. Now, Johnny Quest? Adventures of Johnny Quest? Is he one of those guys? I don't know, he looks pretty bloody glum, doesn't he? Mm. Oh, got to go another adventure now. Oh, I just wanted to stay in and look at my kettle. Um, yeah, you've got pretty, sort of half decent articulation. It's gone a bit wobbly over the years. I'll live it up. Um, I'm going to guess. Johnny Guest. No, I'm, I'm going to guest Johnny Quest. Yes, that's exactly what I meant to say. Um, I'm going to have to look that one up afterwards, though. I am not at all sure. Um, as to which characters, well, I haven't got a bloody clue. I don't really know anything about Johnny Quest. I think it was based on, like, a 60s franchise or something. I'm not even sure about that, actually. But it was definitely a cartoon, and I'm guessing the CN is Cartoon Network, so I think that's probably a thing. Yes. Decent figures, though. The, um... Although they're a very cartoony style, the sculpting and the especially the application of the eyes, they're very, very clean. Nice. Here we are. Sit on the side and we'll look you up later. Tell you what. Perfect. Just what everybody... Just go over there. You're freaking me out. Right. It's a gladiator. Can you match the power of the gladiators? Oh, no, it's an American gladiator. That's interesting. I didn't know... Mm, so there was a British... Oh, I'm guessing this guy's name is Turbo. Either that or just says Turbo in his pants and his name was actually Humdinger or something. Um, yeah, there was a British version of Gladiators, and I'm sure they had figures. But I think they might have been bigger than this. This is interesting that you could get the American Gladiators figures over here. I do see them on, sort of turn up on things occasionally, but there we are. So he can move his pugil stick or whatever around, and yeah. I think the British ones had the same sort of um, setup where they're just you permanently got hands like they're trying to bloody ride a motorcycle or something, and you can just put them next to each other and go meh meh meh. Is the, what is the scale on that? Um, yeah, but no, he's a bit taller than three three-quarter inch, actually. He's like four and a half inch, maybe, when he's up? I don't know. I don't know, because they're all squatted down, so it's hard to say, isn't it? But there we are. This apparently is Turbo. Was he one of the popular American Gladiators? I've got no idea. They did show American Gladiators over here, but it was like at two o'clock in the morning on a Friday or something, just to fill schedules, you know. It didn't really become a thing till the uh, British version came out. Ah, I was going to say gladiators. I'm surprised they haven't tried to bring that back, but I think they did, and it was a bit of a flop. The American one, not so sure. Right. Oh my god, biker mice from Mars. Now we're really talking. It's an incredible camo get up there. Is that the basic version, or is this some sort of deluxe? Oh, there's a button in the back. Oh, look at that. Oof. He can chin you right good. Dun 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 dun. Wait for it. Ow. And that, everyone, was how every episode ended. So, don't know much about Biker Mice from Mars. Again, a bit after my time for the sort of kids' cartoons, but very chunky figures. Very chunky. Crikey. Um, yeah, decent articulation as well. I also quite like the action feature. Action features tend to be a bit shit in figures. Um, that actually does look like he's kind of punching, which is something. Although you do end up with a big stick poking out of his back, so swings and roundabouts. Um, oh, and you can't really pose the... Oh, you can pose the arm a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's actually, that's not too bad, and it spins around that way. As they go, that's not that bad an action feature. Yeah, I think it worked better when you just... There we are. We got back to it somehow. This character's name, I've got no idea. He's the one with two earrings in that ear, a bit bitten out of that ear. Antenna, they all had antenna. Oh, the antenna go in! <laughs> Don't see the point of that, but nice bonus not going to break in that case more solid and uh, he's got an eye patch but as to which character he is i don't bloody know we'll find his name up later because i'm always interested to know these things oh bloody hell it's the t1000 i've reviewed this in the past t1000 figure from the terminator 2 series looks absolutely nothing like robert patrick and they thought hmm you know what he's often looks like a motorcycle policeman so we'll sculpt him like that but how do we get across the whole, hmm, he turns into liquid metal and morphs into other shapes thing? I know. We'll have it so his ass flies off and fires missiles. Uh, it's still one of the weirdest concepts I've ever seen for a figure. Who thought it was a good idea to have his ass fly up to where his head is and fire rocket? It just... 
No idea. Anyway, look back at my old Terminator 2 video if you want to see more of that. And finally, shitting hell, one I haven't got a bloody clue on. What the hell is this? Melting porridge, man. Sort of a medieval look to it. Oh my god. What the... What the hell is this? Why has he got spikes in his head that control some massive others? <laughs> I defend myself with my spikes. It looks more like a tray. It's a trough <laughs> for when he's going to the cinema and just fill it full of popcorn and go. Ang, 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 ang. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, you got the articulation's weird. His arms only go up and down like this, so he can just flap his arms. He's got a tray that comes out. And the legs have a bit more movement, but very chunky 90s feel to this. What can we find? 19... I think that's 1992 M4 China. I don't have a bloody clue on this. Is that to put more spikes in on this back there? I don't know. Well, no, because that would get in the way, wouldn't it? I haven't got a bloody clue what this is. No, I've been completely beaten on the... Yeah, the box is empty on the last bloody figure. Um, no, nope, I'm going to have to go and look up... The man of living porridge. I think we can safely assume one thing. He's definitely a bad guy. Jump cut to post-research names of figures. And there's more than just the name of the figure for this, because I was hideously wrong. This is not a Johnny Quest figure at all. It's a Ben 10 figure. A character called, wait for it, Kevin Levin. <laughs> I'm not making that up. Um, specifically from Ben 10 Alien Force, which is a, like a series that was set years after the first series or something. I don't know. I know nothing about Ben 10. It's way past my time. Um, but yeah, I assumed everything in here were 80s and 90s figures, but no! Ben 10 has leaked in from the late 2000s like a stinky beef, whatever the hell that means. Um, yeah, well there we are. The best thing about this though is you can now look in the comments and see people going, oh that's not a Johnny Quest figure, that's a Ben 10 figure, because they've decided to comment before watching the end of the video. So that's always fun. Look out for that. Anyway, Kevin, you can go and live over there now. This is indeed a windowsill, sorry, Minotaur, no, we're sticking with windowsill, from um, the Power Rangers, so that was nice and easy. This character is called Modo, because he is part of a Komodo dragon. No, uh, Modo, apparently, the metal arm one with the eye patch on that is Modo. This is specifically Commando Modo, in, in his camouflage being camouflaged in a candy cane factory, apparently. Um, yeah, not quite sure they've understood the concept of camouflage, but whatever. This is indeed Hasbro Ninja Warriors, but the full name of the range uh, were Ninja Warriors Enemies of Evil. Didn't know the Enemies of Evil bit, obviously. And apparently this character is called Scorpia. And the pizza originally, although they all came with like a bit of clothing or a bit of, you know, a cloth robe or something like that. But that has long since gone. Goodbye, Scorpia. Uh, this one is called J.B. Reese. Good for him. The J.B. stands for Jungle Brothers, which are his favourite um, 90s dance act. And this freakish bastard is called Deputy Fuzz. <laughs> I ain't kidding. He is called Deputy Fuzz. Ah, what a concept. Um, yeah, I, I don't actually remember him from the cartoon. I don't remember much of the cartoon at all, to be honest. So, go and live over there. He's a deputy. He must have been in it a lot, actually. And finally, the one we had no clue on, King Pudding Face the Ninth with his tray of doom. This is apparently a figure called Warlord Slasher from King Arthur and the Knights of Justice, which was a TV show, it was a cartoon, where weirdly um, Merlin brings back in time a, an American football team to replace King Arthur and the actual knights because they're, they're all, I don't know, trapped with a spell or something. It's all a bit odd. And there were multiple characters called Warlords, and they were, like, made by um, the evil Morgana Le Fay or whatever, and they were, like, golems, basically, and sort of animated stone. And if you smashed them up, she could bring them back to life. And there were loads of different ones, and this particular one is Warlord Slasher. I slash things with my... Pinner for apron. Um, yeah, that's it, really. There was also a Super Nintendo game. But hey, there was a Super Nintendo game with a lot of these properties. So there we go. That is an exciting bag of figures. And I knew what they all were except two. Where one I had to give up and one I was just wrong. Curses! Uh, tell you what I'm not wrong about, though. This is an action figure of Ashens. This is an action figure of the Cube. If you want the AshensMovie.com, they're only going to be on sale for another week from the upload of this video. Oh.
also, if you want uh, physical copies of the um, films, they're available again as well for the time being. Look, here's some now, and you get uh, free digital stuff, some goodies with the figures. But yeah, ashesmovie.com if you're interested. I'm going now. Bye. Boy, boy.